Hi again, folks, and welcome or welcome back to NTI's Japan Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Ziv Nakajimam, again. Great to have you with us today. Glad you could tune in. We're going to talk Akia today. So those are traditional or just older homes in the countryside, which Japan has a great many of. So houses, mainly wooden structures that have been more or less abandoned. As you probably know, and we've discussed here in the past many times, Japan's population is declining and aging fast, which means that smaller countryside villages and townships are slowly emptying out and conglomerating into the bigger cities and metropolitan centers. And that leaves a lot of those old family homes empty and available for sale, normally with significant land plots attached to them as well at very affordable prices. So in many cases, they're practically given away just a few thousands or tens of thousands of dollars, say 20 or 30,000. And in some particularly remote areas that the government has designated for repopulation, you could potentially even get them for free. Although that particular scheme does come with its own set of terms and conditions that wouldn't necessarily work for most. But in any case, the idea of owning a country home in Japan obviously appeals to many people, at least on a theoretical level. It is important, however, to know what's involved in these purchases, both on a logistics level and also as far as budget for renovations and repairs is concerned, um, because these old houses would not normally be immediately livable as they are, or at least not comfortably so. So today's episode is a recording of a call with a young guy from the US who's currently actually living in Germany. And he and his partner are considering buying one of those old abandoned homes renovating it and then potentially leasing it out on a short-term basis by the week or by the month, etc. Um, but before I play the uh, call for you, just a quick update on our free webinar that we've mentioned. So the date's been set. That's going to be on March 8th, that's Sunday, 8 p.m. Japan time, which was the time slot that most of you opted for. For our U.S. listeners, that's Saturday evening, March 7th. And based again on your feedback and requests, We're going to talk not just Japan specifically like we thought initially, but also property investment basics, strategies, portfolio structures, and how these various strategies are applicable here in Japan. How to choose your investment locations, various advantages and disadvantages of the market here. What you can expect when you first enter this arena. And of course, plenty of deal analysis, uh, spreadsheets and Q&A. We've already received quite a few questions from you and we'll also take questions live via chat. So don't forget to register. We'll post the link again in this episode's show notes. We have worked out how you can sign in even if you haven't registered in advance. So we will um, publish that link uh, just ahead of the seminar. Um, But if you do register in advance, it'll give us a chance to focus more on the topics that interest you and also will enable you to send us some questions in advance, which will be uh, on a first come, first serve basis, uh, just as far as the time frame will allow. So that's March 8th. Sunday evening at 8 p.m. Japan time, probably about two hours long. We hope to have you with us, but if not, we'll be recording, of course, and sharing it here on the podcast, as well as on our website and YouTube channel. So you'll also be able to see the slides, the spreadsheets, and all the other goodies that we'll be sharing with you during the webinar itself. Okay, so without further ado, here's a recording of a business call with a new client in the market for Akia, cheap, abandoned, or mostly abandoned countryside homes in Japan. Enjoy, and I'll see you on the other side. Yep, so go for it. So you've been to Japan, or you're just interested in Japan, or what's your background with it? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I've only been there one time, I think, uh, what was it, one or two years ago. Yep. Um, but me and uh, my partner are interested to, uh, as I told you, find a somewhat cheaper property there. Um, uh, for purposes of like uh, living, but also um, maybe uh, cleaning it up a bit and and um, and doing short term rentals to you know help sustain the place and our, ourselves a bit. Okay, so yeah. in that case, it can't be too too countryside. I mean, you want to get guests to come mm-hmm. there, yeah? Yes, but. Um, it's not our primary focus, so we'll we're kind of flexible on that possibility, I guess, so to say. Uh, but because we'd like it to be quite in the nature, but of course, uh, if it's accessible, that's a huge plus. 
Rusty. Well, I mean, they're all accessible unless you're out in the uh, snowy areas where it might be uh, closed off for, you know, parts of the winter. Generally speaking, the countryside is always accessible, but um, just the question is with short-term stays, the question is if you're going to be able to generate some interests for people to actually stay there. Because if there's nothing there um, to, to get people to come there and, and pay money to stay, you'll have to turn the place into an attraction on its own, on its own right sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, this could be a possibility too. I mean, I'm a media artist and um, we might, this has also been a conversation, um, but uh, yeah, we might do something like that, turn the place into its own kind of destination. But uh, yeah, I think the areas we're looking in also have a lot of, uh, you know, tourist, tourist sites around. Uh, in general, like in the Shikoku and Kyushu area, yep. uh, if we find the right place. Oh, but well. like I said, the biggest focus is uh, home for us. But uh, especially at the beginning, we were lo- we were pretty open to doing these rentals. Okay. Well, I mean, Shikoku can be very rural in parts, but Kyushu is generally uh, well toured and very accessible. And are you um? Are you the DIY types? Are you looking for a place that you're going to be renovating on your own, or is, does it have to be something that's already good to move into? Yeah, um, this kind of depends on, I guess, the asking price and uh, s- some financial factors like that. Um, I used to work construction, so smaller scale things I can do over time, but of course... I'm not knowledge or equipped to do anything um, like a bigger uh, task. So I guess we're kind of hoping to find a place we don't, you know, definitely not something we have to knock over <laughs> and rebuild. Yeah. But um, so looking more for something that's um, not going to take some serious work uh, to get to standard to standard to live in. Yeah. Um, but also it can't, uh, be, uh, too outside of our price range either, which, so I guess, uh, ideally we've, uh, been looking at properties that are in the one to two million yen asking price and up to three million yen if they are seeming like they're in a decent enough condition. Um, so this is kind of, uh, what we're looking at, we've been looking at. Okay, well, I mean, for that price range, it's probably not going to be a place. I mean, it it might be livable in the sense that there'll be a roof over your head and there'll be walls, but um, it's probably going to be a very old traditional house, which means that you'll definitely want to put in some insulation. Otherwise, it's going to be mm. freezing in the winter. Mm. Um, so, what's your budget with potential renovation? Let's say that you do have to put some money into it to make it comfortable. What's your budget, including that? Uh, okay, in- including that. Um, well, you mean with the buying price and renovations? Well, at least uh, basic. I, I mean, do... if you don't put in some, um, I don't know, some extra walling or double glazed windows or something just to, to yes. make it insulated, you're going to be freezing there in the winter. Yes, of course, of course. Um, and I mean, uh, I mean, some properties I was looking at don't look like it would be uh, requiring us to put in windows insulation, but maybe you're right for the most part. Let me just convert the money to see um, what that would be in the end. I, I guess in total, I would hope not to spend more than like 4.5 million yen or 4.3 4.5 okay and is that inclusive of the uh, purchase cost or is that um, just the asking? yes yes um so purchase cost worst case could potentially come up to um let's say 20 percent. it usually ends up being more like 15 16 but just worst case depending on the official evaluation mm. of the place um so that would mean that you're looking for an asking price of about 3.7, 3.8 million max, yeah? Oh, sorry, uh, 
purchase price, including the renovation, should be up to 3.7, 3.8 max. Yeah, max, I would say. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, so let's say, as you said, uh, the the place itself may be up to 3 million, and then um, with costs that could be, worst case, 3.6, and then you might have to put in another let's say, worst case, another million or hopefully less than that just to uh, do it up a bit, yeah? Mm, yes. Okay. Um, it, it's it's doable. It's just that the amount of renovation you need to do as opposed to how comfortable it's going to be without that, um, we'll have to take that on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes, definitely. And it looks like you've already been looking at some samples, so could you send me some links to what you've been looking at? Okay, but... Uh... I have to do that later. There's quite a lot. Yeah, yeah take it. Huh? <laughs> and um, and yeah, I am not sure like the scope of your agency with properties. You know, like if these are listings, I can visit with you, or I can only visit you know certain listings under. I don't know, under your scope. No, no, I, we're not. We're, don't we don't actually have any listings per se. We're not realtors. Uh, we're buyers agents. Okay. So we're happy to represent you. Um, we don't have any interest in any particular properties to sell you or anything. We're just on your side of things. So we're happy to represent you when you visit here. And I guess especially in those um, country areas, it's sometimes a bit difficult to get the uh, local realtors to communicate with the foreigners. So yes, you're... although we will be coming with a friend living in Kyoto. Oh, so brilliant. A Japanese okay. speaker. Okay. Um, well, have you have you tried to contact any of those agents? Did you get any kind of responses from them? Um, no, no. Um, my partner just picked um, uh, quite a handful of of the properties we've been looking at to respond. Maybe just a couple nights ago, so I still have to go through those listings and kind of contact them. Okay, and maybe yeah, get uh, my friend who's Japanese speaker to write, write us up. Yep. Uh, and does he, <laughs> um, is he actually Japanese? Does he have a Japanese name? Uh, no, she, she's not. She's from China. Uh, she's just been living there. Okay. So no, she's not native. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I would probably try, I mean, obviously we're happy for your business, but if it is possible for you to do this kind of thing without us, maybe get her to try to send off a few emails first. Um, maybe not to the properties you're most interested in, just to make sure they don't get cold feet and then sort of refuse us as well. But maybe get her to uh, just shoot off a few emails to the least attractive properties, just to see if you're getting a, a good response from the agents there. Okay. Um, because they'll often, I mean, once they see a foreign name, they might get cold feet, but they might not. So it depends on the age. Some of them are pretty open-minded and can deal with foreigners, and some of them will just go into freeze mode. So um, I guess the first step would be to get her to try to uh, contact them and explain in Japanese that um, she's in Japan and she's got friends who are interested in this and that property. And then see if you get a reply. If it looks like the areas that you're looking at um, are not very foreigner friendly, as in people don't reply to her or they reply to just one email and then they sort of shut down, um, that's probably when you might need somebody like us so that we can give them the um, Japanese face and assure them that they'll never have to speak to a foreigner directly and that we will be accompanying you with our Japanese staff. Um, that we can sign documents on your behalf if, if they need somebody to who can actually read Japanese and so forth. Um, and okay. then it usually becomes a lot easier if if it turns out that they're a bit foreigner shy. Okay, got that. So in, in most major cities, like in Tokyo and Osaka, you'll usually um, have at least five or ten agencies that can deal with um, foreigners. In smaller cities... Um, say Fukuoka, there's one or two. Sapporo, there's one or two. Uh, Nagoya, there's one or two. Um, <laughs> and in the rural areas, it's a lot rarer to find somebody who can actually. It's not just the 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 language, just the the, the fear of foreigners as a rule. Yes. Um, so I mean. If you want to start working with us from the get-go, that's fine. But if you want to maybe try to do it on your own, maybe try to get her to send a few emails first. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can definitely 
go that route and and kind of touch base with you uh if if we've heard back (laughs) or if we don't hear back yeah i mean that's Uh, usually the case and keep the properties that you really like keep them off that list for now just to make sure that um they don't freak out and then don't talk to us as well so start with the least attractive ones and, okay. and then um, just explain to them via your friend, explain to them everything that you've explained to me and see how you go. I mean, don't get me wrong. We're always happy to take your money. It's just that um, with us, uh, there's an added cost. So the realtors charge what the realtors charge. And then for us to represent you, that's another, um, with your price range, that's another 5%. Mm. Um, so yes. maybe before you go on with that expense, maybe just see if you can do it on your, a- am I pushing you away? I mean, if you want us to kind of step in from the get go, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm just trying to, to think about your expenses. That's all. No, uh, you're not. I mean, I know, I know, uh, this would be the case either way. So, yeah. um, so, but yeah, I think that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, just to see if we get a <laughs> response and I guess how much additional help yeah. we're going to need, if, if we're going to need that uh, support or not. Yeah. So, and I mean, from, from our experience um, with doing insulation and that sort of thing, if you're looking at your typical, let's say, three-bedroom house, uh, about 100 square meters or so, um you're looking just for the double glazed windows you're looking at about um 800,000 to 1 million yen to install mm-hmm. um whether there's anything else that would need to be done or not i'm not sure so if and when you visit um your friend again or us can help you maybe um get a few estimates from um local renovation uh, companies or repair companies or carpenters or people that'll just uh might be able to join you and let you know what kind of work would need to be done and how much it would approximately cost. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we, I, I mean, we can know. step in on an hourly basis and just provide support or join you on the trip or um, organize for somebody to meet you there. And we can definitely help down the track. Um, I'm not sure what your visa situation will be, but in case you wouldn't have a resident visa and you might need to, um, you might not be able to open a bank account. So we can definitely help you with them. Um, um, collecting money, paying expenses, assuming you will have um, guests or, or short-term stay tenants at some phase. So we're pretty flexible in as far as the service that we provide and whether you need us for a purchase, which is a percentage of the purchase price, or if you just need, on a, need us on an hourly basis, which is an hourly charge. So, I mean, we're there for you, whatever you need us to. So just maybe have a go on your own, see how well... Um, you can communicate with these guys and then tell us if you want us to step in and, and at what capacity. Okay. That's really good to know. Uh, what is your hourly rate? Uh, it's uh, 2,800 yen plus tax. So pretty cheap. 2,800. Okay. Yeah, that's about uh, 30, 30 bucks a one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, okay. Yeah. I guess we'll, we'll do that since we haven't, even reached out yet. Uh, the, the time frame we're going to be there, uh, I, I'll actually be there uh, from March 25th to the April 13th. Um, so not very long. And my partner won't arrive until the 3rd of April. So it will be kind of a, a quick... <laughs> A quick rush to see all of the properties, but that's the time period. Okay, well, um, Chikako, who is my wife and business partner, um, is usually the one who joins these uh, um, tours or, or uh, business trips with customers. I know that she's away. <coughs> pardon me, she's away until the twenty eighth of March, but after that, she should be available to join you there. Okay, great. Yeah, because I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't start looking until uh, the beginning of April. Yeah. So she should uh, be available, but we do need advance notice. The diary does fill up pretty quick. So yeah, of course. Start with um, the inquiries, so and then if it looks like they're okay to just meet you there with your friend, that's great. And if you do need us, just give us at least a month or so in advance, so make sure we're available. Okay. 
yeah, that, that sounds like a good plan. And as um, aside from our fee, we do need transportation and accommodation paid, though. Okay. Um, okay. Got it. Um, and uh, for these, I know there's quite a few taxes in these in the around the purchasing and some year, yearly taxes. Uh, for the property, yep. I didn't know if you had any um, advice or. Yeah, or, I can give you a rough idea of what us. it. I can give you a rough idea. The actual cost will depend on the official evaluation of the property um, as of the last property tax statement. So, roughly speaking, the agent's fee um, for these prices is going to be. It works out to be three percent plus sixty thousand yen plus tax. So usually it's somewhere between four to five percent. Okay. And then the uh, purchase tax, which is a statement that you get, that's a one-off payment that you need to pay somewhere between 6 to 24 months from settlement. And um, that's usually, again, depending on the official eval, but that's usually about 2.5%. Okay. <clears throat> Legal and registration costs um, can vary a lot depending on the official eval, usually between... Three to anywhere up to 8%. Usually they end up being about 4 or 5 Okay. Um, and then if you need somebody like us, that's 5% on top of that. So that's why we like to assume a worst case scenario of 20%. And like I said, usually it'll end up being something like 16 or 17. If you need us. If you don't need us, that's going to be 12 or 13. Okay. Um, just writing this. So you can okay. assume worst case, including us, 20%. Worst case, without us, 15%. That's that's including all, all of these fees or just with this per purchase? All of the, the, the purchase fees. Yeah, so okay. All of the purchase costs, uh, worst case, if you need the buyer's agent like us, is 20%. And if you don't need us, worst case, 15%. Okay. And I it's see. usually going to end up being something like uh, two or three percent less than that, but we like to assume a worst case scenario. And these are all based off of the asking price? No, nothing to do with the market price. They're only based on the official value. Ah, uh, the realtor's fee. Uh, the realtor's fee and our fee is based on the mark on the uh, on the sale price. Okay. But, but the legal and registration fee and the purchase tax are based on the government's official evaluation, and that's updated once every few years. So there could be a bit of a gap if an area has gone up in value, or in the case of the properties that you're looking at, it probably went down in value. And then the official eval is probably going to be slightly higher than the market pr than the sale price you've actually paid. So. If the gap is bigger, you might be paying closer to the worst case scenario. And if the gap is pretty small, it's going to be less. Okay, got it. And uh, there's uh, also a, a yearly tax or monthly even that I need to pay? Not monthly, it's yearly property tax. Okay, yes. Um, and that again varies. If the property is under 200 square meter, it's usually be going to be something like... Um, Three quarters of a percent up to about 1.5 percent of the purchase price. Okay. If it's over 200 square meters, though, it could be more than that. I almost double that. So, but I'm guessing if it's just for you and your partner, it's probably not going to be over 200 square, right? Uh, this is for the whole property and not the. No, no, just the structure. I'm the... sorry, just the structure. Oh, just the structure. Uh, the land component. I don't we think could... so. Yeah. I mean, uh, I can't be certain, but it depends what we, our intentions are. Because um, yeah. it's not necessarily a place gonna that will be just for us. Um, okay. Well, I mean, depending on how big the land is as well, right? If we're talking about an average plot and the, the house fills up, let's say, uh, 60 to 80% of the plot, then that's what I told you. If the land plot is bigger, it could be higher. So it depends on what you're looking at. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, I got it. Um, okay, uh, I think I think that's all the questions I have for now. Um, 
unless there's something you think is urgent to bring to my attention, <laughs> uh, um, being a naive... Not on a general person. level, but if you send me some links, I can give you our opinion about each and every particular property you're looking at. Um, just bear in mind that with Japanese, you might know this, sorry if I'm telling you something you know, but with Japanese building standards and materials, um, there's going to be a fair amount of renovations and repairs required on a regular basis, right? These are not, um, they're not made of stone or concrete. In most cases, they're um, a mixture of uh, wood, or if it's a more modern building, maybe a steel frame with wood on top. Mm. So if they're older than, say, 15, 20 years, there's going to be regular maintenance and renovations that you really will have to do if you want to keep it livable. Okay. So just make sure that you've got the capital for that. Okay. Got it. Thanks for letting me know. No worries. So does, okay. Is that pretty well, much cover uh, what you w wanted to, uh, to discuss? Yeah, I think it's a, a good start. Um, I'll I'll keep in touch with you about the listings we contact, and I'll also send you over the links for the ones we're most interested in yep. so far. No worries. And uh, feel free to um, CC me on emails between you and your friend if you just want us to jump in and give you our opinion about anything. Okay. Thank you. Sounds My great. Pleasure. Appreciate your time. Zin. Good luck. Sounds All like right. an exciting adventure. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so there you have it. Typical uh, Akia old countryside home purchase scenario and a strategy. So whether it's for your own use or to potentially turn into a guest house like this guy is planning to do, just bear in mind, as we've discussed, the potential language and cultural barriers. You might want to hire either us or someone like us to bridge that gap if you don't have local representation here of some sort. And also to um, just get someone to cast a more professional eye over any other expenses that might be involved in the properties you're considering. And in the case of these older houses, there are also going to be at least some, uh, in many cases, quite a lot of those expenses. So something that you want to review maybe just prior to purchase. So we hope to see you with us on the webinar, March 8th, Sunday, 8 p.m. Japan time. Do register if you plan to join us. And of course, as usual, we'd really appreciate it if you could share this podcast with your networks and leave us your thoughts or a star rating or worded review on the iTunes store if you can spare a minute. And it seriously doesn't take longer than a minute. So until next time, from all of us here at NTI, have a great day or night ahead. Yoshiku.